Hi everybody, it's Brittany. So today we're going over the different English translations of the organon. You might think, logically, that there's only one version of a book, but Hahnemann wrote six editions of the organon in German, and most editions have been translated into English multiple times. So we actually have a whole bunch of different books, and I have a wasted a lot of time and money tracking down different versions only to think find out that I, I had gotten a duplicate um, so hopefully I will save you from my fate <laughs> so before we get into the different translations I'm gonna go over the organon itself quickly so the organon was written by Hahnemann the first edition in 1810 and it was written to set down principles of practice of medicine in general but also homeopathy in particular and it's also how to put those principles into practice so it's this how-to manual of philosophy behind why we practice. Um, Hahnemann wrote six editions of the book like I said starting in 1810 and through to 1842 so we've got about a 30 year period when he's updating his organon over time. The last edition, the sixth edition, he finished in 1842, but it was not published even in German until 1921. That's a long story that we won't get into today. Now the organon consists of essentially three main parts, a preface, introduction, and 291 aphorisms. The meat of the work, really, is the 291 aphorisms. Those are where he lays down the philosophy and how to practice. The preface and introduction really are more about um, understanding medicine at his time and his opinions, which were not high of medicine at the time. Um, so while I think they are worthwhile, really they are not as important as the 291 aphorisms. All translations will include the aphorisms, but not all translations include the preface or introduction. So editions 1, 4, 5, and 6 have all been translated into English at some point in time. There is no version of in English of 2 and 3. Okay, so the first edition of the Organon. The first edition was translated by a British homeopath named Charles Wheeler in 1913. This is the only translation of the first edition that we have, as far as I can find. By 1913, we actually have multiple translations of both the fourth and the fifth edition. So why did Wheeler publish the first edition in 1913? He did not publish it to help the profession, as far as I can figure. <laughs> At least he doesn't say that. He says that the publisher, Every Man's Library, only published documents of historical importance. They felt, the publisher, at least that's what he says, maybe Wheeler did too, that the first edition of the Organon, as the first, was the most historically significant. So they decided to translate this first edition. Um, he also said the publisher didn't want to be seen as supporting homeopathy. Maybe they felt that by publishing the first edition, it wasn't as political as publishing another translation of the fourth or fifth. I don't know. I don't really even know why Wheeler agreed to that, but I don't know. Whatever. So the fourth edition was written in 1829. It was translated into English first by an Irish homeopath, Charles Devriant. It was edited by Samuel Stratton, so you will see Samuel Stratton's name more often than Devrient's. So they published their translation in 1833. In 1833, Hahnemann also published his fifth edition, so it's basically out of date by the time it went to the press, um, but at least we finally had an English translation. This was the first English translation done of the Organon. Um, so it was reproduced for many years, afterwards. The introduction and preface are included. In the United States, this translation was published as these so-called American editions. The first of these American editions was published in 1836, um, but it, it gets a little bit murky. So because the fifth edition had been published by this point, the Americans added, good old Americans, I am American, so I can say that. Um, they added 
things they felt were missing from the fourth edition that were, appeared in the fifth. So they essentially tried to make it a fifth edition translation by adding in these things that came out in the fifth. They don't say there's a person who did this. They cite the North American Academy of the Homeopathic Healing Art, whoever that is. Um, Herring wrote the introduction to these American editions, so it's potentially Herring's translation. I have no idea. Um, but you will sometimes see an organon with Herring's name on it, and these are these American editions that are actually Devrient's translation with editions by the North American Academy of whatever. But so that's the fourth edition. That's all we got. So now we get to edition 5, which as I said before was first published by Hahnemann in 1833. In 1849, it was translated into English by a Scottish homeopath, Dudgeon. He updated it in 1893, so sometimes you will see a Dudgeon translation cited as 1893, sometimes as 1849, and it's because he had these two different editions. So what about across the pond? So by 1860, so this is after Dudgeon translates his fifth edition, um, the American editions, which as I talked about were based on Devrian's fourth edition, had gone through their own fourth edition. <laughs> um, and one homeopath, Conrad Besselheft, said that demand was growing for the organon, but Dudgeon's translation is of 18, the, in 1849 and the American editions, based on Devrian's work, were both out of print. What's Conrad Vessel have to do but to make his own translation? So he translates the fifth edition in 1876. He also felt, as do I, that Dudgeon's translation was far superior to Devrian's and he needed to essentially for some reason, he also felt he needed to um, make a translation for American minds because for some reason they need something different than a British mind and so Dungeon's version, even though it was better, was not better for Americans. I don't understand. Uh, but whatever. Um, so you will sometimes see a vessel heft translation of the organon. So edition six, finally. So as I said before, it was completed in 1842, but was not published even in German until 1921. It was published quickly into English. It was published um, or translated into English in 1922, and it's gone through two other translations. So in total, we have three translations of the sixth edition. So the first translation was done by Borki. And so first let me back up and, and talk about how Hahnemann wrote the 6th edition. So the, what he did for the 6th edition was he would just put a piece of blank paper in between like each piece of paper of his 5th edition and just wrote notes about what he wanted to change for the 6th edition. So what Boricke did was basically just translate those notes that Hahnemann put and that was his translation of the 6th. So for everything that was unchanged between the 5th edition and the 6th edition, Boricke kept Dudgeon's translation. So you will often see Boricke's name, but you should know most of what you're reading is actually the Dudgeon translation, with a few notes by Boricke. Now it's also, this is also the version, just so you are aware, that you will see everywhere, because it's the English translation of the 6th that is out of copyright. <laughs> so. You will see on websites where they have the organ on free online. It's all Borky and Dudgeon's work. It is not the easiest thing to read because, I mean, it was written 100 years ago. And so it's very hard Victorian English. So do we have anything more modern? Yes. We have two much more modern translations of the sixth edition. The first one's done in 18, sorry, 1982 by uh, the homeopaths Joost Kunzli, Alan Noday, and Peter Pendleton. This version, they tried to mostly just modernize the language as an improvement over the Dudgeon and Borky. They did not do an introduction and a preface, but they do have all of the aphorisms. In 1996, 
Stephen Decker and Wendy Brewster O'Reilly did another translation. Um, Wendy Brewster O'Reilly added annotations and put um, essentially like chapters and subchapters through the work so that you can sort of see the, the organon structure throughout. Um, and the translation is Stephen Decker's. All right, I hope this was helpful. If you liked it, hit the thumbs up below and be sure to subscribe so you don't miss any other videos on the Organon. Until next time, bye.